Guys, check out how helpful my Rocket Money app is. You see here, you can go through all your reoccurring subscriptions. I got one for Hotworks. I put the account on hold. All of a sudden, it went back up to full in statement. I was I was paying it was paying nine on hold and then it went up to seventy. Wait, what? <laughs> I did not do that. But I got the notification from Rocket Money. That's it. This app is free and that just paid for itself. And this is why you should have this app because it's constantly monitoring all the things that charges you. You know, it helps you plan your yeah. budget. Yeah, it did the same thing for me this month. It said like, hey, your gas bill is way higher than normal. I looked at it. It's like, that's weird. Didn't change anything. Called them up. They're like, oh yeah, there's a, there was a, a, a meter reading error. Uh, here's $40 back. It's like, you Damn. This is such a great you thing. You mother. need it. <laughs> I caught you. See, I've been using Rocket Money for a long time. I got the boys into it. Mm -hmm. I like to stay on top of everything. And look it. It's beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best things that I've done. It's helped me stay organized. Guys, you got to grab it. It's yeah. completely free. If you want to go above and beyond, there are premium features, but it is so helpful for us. Go check it out. Rocketmoney.com slash Angry Joe Show. Click the link below. Get it organized. Mm -hmm. And I got, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check it out. Hey guys, welcome to our review of Rings of Power, yeah. Season 2, <laughs> Episode 5. We are in the thick of it now. Uh, I'm going to let show. you guys go first. What, what did you think of the uh, Episode 5, Halls of Stone? Um, This was an episode of boringness. Not a lot yes. happened. You're like, oh, I, we don't trust the rings. And I don't really care what's going on in Numenor. Numenor. Newman, what was that? Um, that sounded weird. Wait, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, all that all that drama that's going on over there, I don't care about. I don't care about those characters. Um, honestly, it was a pretty slow episode. I thought they kind of would have ramped up the action because they caught Galadriel, and then we didn't really get to see much of that till the end, which is kind of stupid. Um, I'm honestly like, this is just boring. I'm I'm. I don't even care anymore. I'm you're bored. You're bored, Joe. You're knocked out, and when I you am. get knocked out, then that leads to boredom. Yeah, and the only positive thing I could say about this, there was no uh, heart foot and there you go. the stupid wizard. Yeah, I will jump in, and I say that, you know, that's... by by default, the episode's slightly better. We don't have heart foots. Yes, that's We don't the have positive. Galadriel. We, we're focusing on the corruption of the rings. Even though this, and, and honestly, for most of it, 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 I thought it was written a little better. I have some insight onto that, but it still falls apart in the third act. And yeah. there's three things that really bother me, but I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, like honestly, like I, I'm already checked out, like you said, because like we are in season two, episode five, and I don't care about these characters. You should have done that in the first season. None of these characters are really likable, yet during... That's, Darren is my boy, yeah, man. That's, that's really, about it, though. I mean, that's where the acting is good. Man, I saw the behind-the-scenes uh, episode for this. The actor is Durin. Has that doing, but also with the relationship with his father, the change that's happening to him. Like, he puts so much of himself into that dwarven character. And Peter Mullen... I, 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 you know, if you see a picture of him, you're like, oh, that guy is the F Duran's father. These two are like the best actors on the show. Yeah, but other than that, like, uh, I just want the Balrog to go destroy everything. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I mean this this episode they put their best foot forward, um, and this is the best they can possibly do. And for me, it just it just falls short. Um, you know, we've got the good storylines that I care more about. It's just like with the the further we go into the season, the further that the, the the compression of the timeline and the speed running through the important events. And it's just, it's so hard knowing where, what they, they, they had and seeing what they did with it. Yeah. And so it's like, we have Farazan looking towards Valinor and he's yeah. already talking about his mortality. And it's like, no motherfucker. We are sweet. That, that does not happen for, for a long period of time. And so that you're, you're completely diminishing Sauron's ability to influence these people at, at later points. We're ruining stuff that comes yeah. later. In addition to ruining the stuff that comes now, we yeah. have broke ass Joffrey who like yes. dime <laughs> store, <laughs> shitty bolted like Ramsey. It, it's too rushed. Like yes. I get it. And it's working on a, a, on a sub level because 
it was non-existent before, but now that a civil war is somewhat brewing, it's somewhat working, but they're all they're all pale in comparison to pretty much all the media we've yeah, seen before. Yeah, I mean, it's like, Al Farazan needed to be one of the main characters of the show. Like, honestly, we needed to, and it needed to become, like, way later on, because you really have to develop this character yes. and set up the stuff that's happening mm -hmm. later. There's a death that happens. Spoilers, someone fucking died, and I felt nothing exactly. and it's supposed to be this big moment i'm just like look you deserve to die because of how poorly the scene is filmed and you're an idiot and i'm glad you're dead the pebble you will not be missed because and it's just like <laughs> who gives a shit and it's because we haven't developed any of these characters because we're speed running through fucking everything yeah. and i it's like i don't care the guy puts on the ring and he's like i'm greedy now it's like the dwarves really don't get affected by the rings very much at all. Yeah, they it's sped, kind of, sped run through that as well. Yeah, and so it's like we just completely are rushing through all of this stuff instead of kind of relishing in some of the cool stuff that could have happened because yeah. the Durant stuff is good. Like, I love both of these actors. I like Disa. She's great. And except for when she just magically finds a crevice on a wall and, like, a thousand people are around like what's the growling it's like we're and running and we never go back there she doesn't say uh could y'all follow me yeah you guys <laughs> yes. am, am, I, am i nuts yes. i just saw something is that, is that my stomach like what, what what is happening what are these 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 gurgling the noises writing here is so poor and so like everything here thing. is just like this is the one where it's and i know we're getting some big action scenes which is gonna pull everyone back in and they're gonna love it because the siege of a from what we've seen kind of looks cool like in the, the, the trailers and so it's like uh, but the problem is so. everything here is dumb and they're trying to, to, to portray it as it's some brilliant fucking thing. Durin stands up in front of his people and he's like, the slaves to the sun we are not. And we are not the people that care about living up there. And it's like, motherfucker, your people were starving to death or going to starve to death in three months because you didn't have the sun. You don't get to say that you're not a slave to the sun. And I know you're trying to write this as you're like real clever, but you're coming it's off as triumph. a moron with a crayon. You're like, I'm not a slave to the sun. The sun answers to me it's like you're just stupid stop it you are not competent enough to rewrite the base story so you need to stop fucking trying because what was actually written is better than this yeah and uh to, to summarize jd Payne and patrick mckay Pat, not not Patrick McRae, who is our friend. Patrick McKay, <laughs> oh, a so bizarro close, version so of him, uh, has fucked up. These are the showrunners that are like, you know, D.B. Weiss and whatever. Except for this is their very Game first time. And this is, uh, yeah, they, they just don't have the talent. Now, uh, some people are saying this is the best episode of the season. It's written by Nicholas Adams, who wrote uh, episode six in season one, the best episode of season one was responsible by Nicholas Adams. And I, I guess I would agree with that with only the first and half of the second act, but then it immediately falls apart later on. So, uh, you know, even when you're trying to praise the writing, you just can't because there's just so much uh, stupidity and, and so many dumb things that happen. It's, uh, I, I, it's just a shitty, let me just say, it's a really shitty way to tell a story. Uh, when you are having to constantly ape lines from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, they're constantly using the exact same lines, uh, you know, and and where it's just, uh, one character says a line way before Galadriel says it or way before um, Gandalf says it, and it takes away it from does. that impact. It's like, why did it. you have to say that thing? that was said in a pivotal moment in the movie. It's just a shitty way to tell a story, to try to do all these member berries, mm -hmm. and to condense the story, and to pick, hey, member, hey, member, hey, member. There, there are no, last episode, there are no Borrow Whites till the Witch King of Angmar. So the, the, the whole scene, the one good scene that we got, and even we had problems with it, they are not around because you have to ha let time pass for the people who died to become raised from the dead. The people are not dead yet. So speed run. I don't We're speed running. <laughs> I don't understand. You know, it's it's just basically speed running through everything, condensing the timeline, which you have to do in this show if you're going to try to do a show of some sort with coherent storylines. Yes. But that difficulty, that level of difficulty is very, very high. 
and uh, these first-time showrunners mm -hmm. and these particular writers uh, do not have the skill uh, to pull it off. So while some people might say episode five is the best of the season, I'm saying if this is the best of the season, you got a problem. Yeah. They're working a lot, a lot. Okay, whatever. Yeah, uh, this is like super speed run. Like we like, what was it? The horse ran all across Middle Earth. Middle Middle Earth saved. Uh, what's the name? Sealdor. Sealdor. Super fast. Well, so it's like, and then uh, he'll never come out of that forest. Oh shit, he's out. <laughs> well, so they sent a message. That kind from, of writing. They sent a message from in like from Aragion to Linden, at the, and it got there before Elrond, who was halfway. He was literally halfway. Because uh, remember, he comes back in the middle of the last episode to go back, and it's like, oh, the message beat you here. It's like, fuck, fucking hell, bro. And they're like, walking. Okay. So they're walking. I, I think I may like the episode a little more than you guys. And it really because of what I said before no Galadriel, no Rune, no Harfoots, no stools, none of that shit that to me has no consequence to this storyline at all yeah. and i'm already seeing where it's headed and it's still it, it's just set up for future seasons sorry we're having sound troubles yeah um and it, it's just not compelling but because we're focusing on the corruption of the ring because we're we're, we're doing the anatar manipulation manipulating the ring smiths that brotherhood of uh, you know pitting people against each other and pushing to to make the rings For men. um yeah of of men that i mean that at least is a little more compelling than say rune and and fucking you know uh poppy and shit like that oh, so yes. i get where you're coming from but it does start to fall apart. Um, there's three major problems I have. Gil Galahad, Gil Galad is so stupid. Yeah. He is so weak. He is depicted in the worst way possible. And I feel sorry for this actor because in the lore, this guy is way more intelligent than he this. He should sideburns for this. He fucking Elrond goes running to the kingdom, goes to the high king and says, I got, we got a huge motherfucking orc army. You know, at the beginning of the season in season one, you're like, oh, the darkness is coming. We must stop them. Let's find them and kick their ass. We found them. Let's go kick their ass. No. Hey, excuse me. What? But why? <laughs> but why? Because we don't know where Sauron is, and I guess at any moment we we could be attacked too, and I don't want to commit my forces. We can't fight them alone. Yeah, you got powerful rings. Your kingdom has has you know, been rebirthed and, and re-energized, and you can't beat up some orcs? I thought he was going to say a stupid line. It's like, well, we can't go to war with them. Think of their women and children. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been more realistic, <laughs> I guess. What? More <laughs> people, too. What? <laughs> there are people, too. Uh, and then, and then the, the, the second thing is... I was appreciating that Celebrimbor was was wavering. Oh, we're right? saying it's K, huh? Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor. Yeah, that's, I, yeah you're right. I, I've saying. done that before Everyone many times. Yeah. Thank you, comments. Joe. And con <laughs> constantly do it because people have a pr problem with my pronunciation <laughs> with everything. So call me out if I mispronounce stuff because it's so important to to the commenters. Uh, but sometimes I'll do it on purpose because I like it. Yeah. All right. Celebrimbor. <laughs> Celebrimbor. I like how he's wavering and making the rings. He's like, nope! The motherfucker's racist against men. He's like, nope! <laughs> men do not they deserve rings. Themselves. That is too far. <laughs> I will make rings for ourselves. I will make rings for the dwarves. They're like a three days ride away, so that's fine. Uh, uh, you have some friends there, but I refuse to make rings for men. Uh, they're too corruptible. And... Honestly, I, I, I think it's kind of cool. It helps explain how the the nine rings of men are even more like fucking evil tainted. and shit yeah. and more tainted because the Elven rings, they're powerful. They do good things and they're mostly good until the one ring is crafted, which then they fall under the one ring. And then the next level is... The dwarves are given their rings, and the dwarves are just so hardy and bullheaded that 
they just kind of power through all of the, the dark energy for a while. It makes them and greedy. And then yeah. it starts to make them greedy and, and, and do stupid shit and dig where they probably shouldn't be digging and stuff like that. Um, so that's the next level over. And then the main rings of man, you put that shit on you. Ah! Ah! <laughs> you fucking turn into ring race. So I thought, okay, this is cool. When Anatar's like, all right, fine. I'm going to make the rings myself because you don't want to make them. I was like, all right. And then he's going to go with these ring smiths and corrupt them and fucking make the rings himself. And may, and I, and uh, Keller Brimbor is in putting less and less. He's no, he may be a few advice here and there. I would have liked. But the problem I have is the about face that he does with the justification of, well, now I've got to make the rings for men because the previous rings were disaster and potentially evil, and I feel bad about the dwarven rings, so now I must make the rings for men. D what? Yeah, I mean, they wrote themselves in the hole because it's like all of the rings were meant for elves, every one of them. And then eventually they, they realize that he doesn't have the sway that he wants. And so that's when they get disseminated to the dwarves and to the to, to men. And so all they had to do was be like, all right, fine. I'm not going to make him for men. I'm going to make him for the elf lords. And then, then Caleb Brimbor is like, oh, cool. Yeah, we'll make him for elves. More yeah, elf rings are good. That and sounds then, good. And then he's like, ah, ha, ha. And then they sack her again and they give him to the men, you know, like it was in the story. That would be fucking it, better. It, it's, it's like, you know. The, like it, was, only, like it was written. If so only like, they had a blueprint. If only they had a blueprint and a way for them to, to go about doing all these things. And it's just it's just crazy it's to me. For the else, it's true. Well, so like the, the the reason that I'm so hard on the show and people I, I see in the comments are like, oh, you you're inconsistent your rating. You're like, you're probably right because I mean I don't I don't hold a lot of regard for my personal ratings. It's just like so much how you feel about certain things, yeah. but. They had a blueprint here that they are shitting on, and they are doing their own thing that at times works within the universe. But at times, it's just so like they're making it up for their for no good reason, and then they write themselves in these holes. And you want me to applaud them for barely crawling out of the shithole that they themselves dug? I no. don't care. You don't get any points for fucking it up and then kind of fixing it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's less talented people playing with some of the best uh, lore that, that there is out there and doing their own thing when it's all mapped out. And your creative juices can flow to figure out how to faithfully adapt something in a condensed tem timeline. You don't need to constantly change things as they are here. Anyways, uh, and then the final third thing that I think holds the episode back is the ridiculous slapstick scene with uh, D Disa, Dira, uh, whatever her name is, singing to the mountain and she drops her fucking present uh, toy for birthday present and it rolls off into a cracked crevice and all of Just a sudden so she, she teleports yeah. <laughs> into the deepest portions of the mountain. I guess she was walking for days looking for her fucking... They um, kept kicking uh, the ball. They kept kicking the ball. <laughs> it's literally... <laughs> <laughs> it's right under the Are market. Are you kidding me? It's it's around the corner from the market is where the Balrog is sleeping. Do you see what I'm saying about fucking sets and sound stages? You're making the world of Tolkien feel so goddamn small. But when you read the actual books, it feels so massive. And at any moment, there could be fucking crazy shit in the world. You know? One of the Where's Mordor? It's right next door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can throw a rock. Yeah, yeah, but it'll take nine years to walk there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're making, and they're, oh, they do the member berry of the door, you know, because yes. how they, the in order to get into Gaza Doom, they have to say the word, you know, friends. Uh, but they're they're making it a Noregion instead of, you know, I don't know, carving it into the mountain <laughs> on the actual door. Whatever. <laughs> they, it's, yeah. it's this kind of stupid shit. But okay, so, uh, but the third thing is Dira, uh, where it's this. I don't know. She encounters, she says a, a nameless thing. I'm assuming it's the Balrog that's, that's slumbering. What I thinking, that's but what I guess it could also be one. the Watcher in the Water, Alex, maybe, because that um, is near the mines of Morton. Well, no, this is Kaza Doom. I'm I'm not sure. Could, so the Watcher in the Water, Joe, is like this Kraken creature. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, from, yeah. The Squidbilly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, from the but it could be yeah. that. It has to be Durin's but Bane. It, it could be Balrog. Yeah. yeah. But, so uh, they teased it, so I assumed it Motherfucker's was not awake, so I'm not sure. And he's not across the hall from the market. <laughs> so we've taken 2,000 years and we squished him into a long weekend the way they did with... Remember the Solo? This, this episode made me feel like the Solo movie, where we find out that Han Solo only did cool stuff for one long weekend. He met Chewie. He did... <laughs> 
did the Kessel Run. He got the the the, the best the week aluminum is, falcon. Best week and it's like the best weekend ever. And it's like, wait a minute. And the rest of the time, he's just sipping coffee. He's just like hanging out. And so it's like they've condensed the second age into like a fucking long weekend. And like a sealer is alive. Like at this period of time, it's like how how is all of this happening? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, and in fact, uh, there's a pivotal character. Well, not pivotal, but a somewhat important character. Um, Elendil. What's the seal door's father's name? Uh, Elendil. Elendil. Elendil has a second son. Uh, Ari. Uh, Anna Rayon. I it... never remember any of this. Don't, don't fucking. I know <laughs> he has a second son because motherfucker has another son who's a motherfucker, and then the line, and then that motherfucker, and then twenty fucking. They make men a... later, you get <laughs> Lord of the Rings and our king, you know. It's really important and... because they make a giant fucking statue of him next to the Isildur statue. Oh, I mean... right. There, there should, there's two. So, there's and only I was one like, wait a minute. Let me. I have to get this goddamn name right. Um... We can't focus on him because he's not important. We have to focus on the evil daughter who's been swayed by. Say that. Go ahead. Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah, the I, point I was going to make. Yeah, the stupid I, fucking rebellious daughter yeah. shit. I hate her God, so goddamn much. Yeah. And it's not that you. I hate her the way that you're supposed to hate a exactly. Joffrey where it's like, oh, this makes That's sense. Exactly it's like how I felt. Yeah. It's like you are making this character up, but you. it's hard to make these characters that like feel evil, but appropriate. And she just feels dumb. Yeah. And so like I, I don't I don't buy any of this stuff. So. Me neither. All that stuff that was uh, an Arion. I didn't care. So an Arion, apparently, Elendil's other son, uh, he apparently was mentioned in season one. They said, oh, yeah, he's on the other side of the island. He's hanging out. <laughs> he's just hanging out on the other side of the island. His brother's funeral? And, not important. And fucking totally so, such it, an important so. character, Ryan. It's, totally missed it. I guess they're going to introduce him in season three and four or five. When clearly the civil war is brewing, the captain and our uh, Ellen Deal, Ellen Deer is being ostracized from the Numenorians and separated, and he's becoming more aligned with the faithful, and he's probably going to go to the other side of the island, and there's his other son. Oh, yeah, I remember you. You know what I mean? It's like, and then he's like, how is our made-up daughter from the writers who made her up, and she being rebellious and... And a bitch and doing all these ridiculous things. Like, yeah. Yep. So the writers made her up. I, I didn't really, I don't really want her. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and give this episode a verdict. The the manipulation of Anatar, uh, the um, handing out of the rings to the dwarves. So that is in effect. And at the very end, we see the crafting of the rings of men. So it, So at least... We're going real fast here, and we're getting past and we get all the Anatar more, stuff. Because I'm not sure how much more, you know, Sauron can gaslight the elves in in these st stupid, stupid ways. Um, well, one of them gets a glimpse. They can't of keep them, it up, right? Yeah. When she puts on the ring and disappears. Oh, she's really important because this kind of confirms. He's just like, ooh, you know who you look like? And it's like, this yeah. is sexual harassment. It's like, you kind of look like my, my ex who I'm definitely in love with. Yeah. And it's like, this also very much. The temptations with that man. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this a four. Uh, I like some of the stuff that was going on with the mines, the corruption in the ring. But then after that, like you said, uh, these characters aren't d developed very well for me to care about them we have a death um didn't yeah i don't oh, even no, know this the guy died name. oh Pebble. Can we, let's move on Ver Verin and then that stupid brat Valindu. child i don't care about him like alex said i hate Valindu, him I, got it right. I hate him for the bad reasons not for the good reasons like joffrey this is this character is just bad that man child Kevin. Yes, him. Um, but the other stuff I do like, and uh, like I said, I just want Balrog to fuck shit up and kill everyone. That's not gonna happen. I know this season. Maybe or... they'll rush it. No. Yeah, I mean that'd be that'd be kind of cool. They just go off script, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's. I agree with you. I think that because they put the best foot forward, uh, the best storylines are for the most part here. Like I think that the the dwarven storyline is more interesting. The Anatar stuff is technically more interesting. 
Um, it's just I, I just think it's held back by some of the things like Anatar. I, I needed better quality stuff out of him. He reminded me more of like the Sphinx from Mystery Men when they're like, <laughs> "You imagine daggers aren't there." It's like, well, maybe you ima- don't see daggers that are there. It's like you can't just say what I said and then like rever- It's like it's not clever. It comes off, especially again. You know, thing is manipulations are very good. No, he's just like it's terrible, and I just wish that it was done a little bit better. They had such really cool CGI when he kind of shows up and he yeah. shows himself as Elf Jesus. It's like if he could do more that, stuff. That was the best part. Yeah, if they do more cool stuff where he's like, no, motherfucker, you're going to listen to me. It's like I would yeah. buy that. Where the, you know. Have you have you seen uh, Celebrimbor and the way he's acting lately? M- m- maybe that, that evil thing that you saw in the other realm, it, m- maybe it's him. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you look really beautiful. Yeah, you are, yeah, real, you are real pretty today. He does look good. All right, I can trust him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Super Charlie simple. <laughs> so I think it's I think it's below average. I think that that we it's one of the best. I do agree that's one of the best episodes of, of the series, and it's mainly because of the absence of the things that I despise that don't feel like they belong. But even the things that kind of do belong, I'm starting to not like very much because they've written themselves into a weird hole, and I don't. I'm not giving them any any amount of credit for write, for trying to write themselves out of it. Yeah, uh, we're headed towards what I think is going to be a three-episode battle siege of Aregion. I think the next three episodes, probably the first episode from this one, episode six, is the opening. You see Galadriel screaming, no, don't attack Aregion out there. He's like, I'm helping you. I'm going to fight Sauron. He's, he's in there. And then throughout the next three episodes is the siege. And I guess by default, hopefully the the battles will be cool. But somehow I'm detecting that they're not going to be very cool. Do you think so? Do you think they're fucked that up too? They fucking better be. Because... Well, we have to watch it anyways. Yeah. So four? I, I, I want something. I gave it a four. Four? Yeah. Four. Um, I, I think, man, I guess I was being lighter on this series than y'all. Five out of ten. I thought it was average. Uh, but upon reflection, when we get here into the uh, breakdown, it'll probably back go back down to a four. But I was trying to be like, this is one of the better episodes. And I'm like, okay, well, what did I rate the other episodes? I rated episode four a three, episode three a three, episode two a five, and episode one a six. And I think just because episode one, you know, had the interesting take the on Sauron and, stuff like that, and, yeah. and it was good initially, <laughs> but now it's starting not to hold up. And this is what we say about our ratings is sometimes, you know, you, you give your rating picture. as a flash. And as you get the full picture and see where it fits it's in that stuff gets lowered yeah. but i'll go ahead and i'll stick with the five out of ten because I, I think probably their best writer is nicholas adams and it's a shame he this is the only episode that he gets to write <laughs> in the series when he wrote the best episode in the last series so you think that his role would be expanded because they're like oh look at the higher ratings that episode six got no he just gets one, this one, and frankly, it's not as good as episode six in season one, so five out of ten. Uh, the next episode uh, doesn't is um, doesn't even is Justin Doble, uh, written by Justin Doble, who uh, wrote one episode in the last uh, season as well. And then the last two are J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. McCray! <laughs> you bastard, Patrick. And they do. They write both the uh, final two episodes. And the final two episodes are uh, directed by the same person. So now I'm changing. From seeing that, I'm changing. The next episode is the beginning of the siege. And then it ends with the siege starting. And then the next two episodes are the little siege arc. But, um, yeah, so uh, five out of ten for episode five. And uh, I, as you can see, I'm just kind of fucking tired. I'm, I'm fucking tired, bored, and yeah. saddened that um, this might be the introduction of uh, Tolkien's writings to a lot of people. And they're like, this is kind of stupid, you know. And it's a, it's a shame because uh, that's that's not really, you know how it is yeah, it I'm, sucks. I'm trying like, to find yeah. yeah Jacob was like a huge Lord of the Rings fan and he started watching the first season he's like oh I stopped so I'm out I got, yeah he was already checked out yeah like no <laughs> this isn't for me <laughs> yeah did you hear that they've already started casting for the new Harry Potter yeah I put my uh, audition tape out there for Harry yeah did you <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a little too old for Harry no no, no it's fine <laughs> 
It's yeah. a, it's a different twist. You have a baby face. It's but, a uh, different twist. I'm 52, and Hispanic. Even even his parents <laughs> are supposed to be like 22. So damn. Like you, yeah, that, <laughs> if you want to feel even worse. Shit. Juan Potter. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a Hispanic name for Harry Potter. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go into the episode breakdown now. Everything old made shitty and new, yep. basically. All right, so um, the episode starts with the dwarven rings being made. Uh, and this whole digging for sunlight shit yeah, does not make sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It's That's the like, foundation. Don't do it. So, and, and the guy's like, we've been digging for weeks or days or whatever it is. And we're just making the mountain more unstable. And and then he does the whole ring thing, and he's like, "Dig here," <laughs> and then they dig, and then they find all. It's like you simultaneous. You're like ruining everything. <laughs> Number one, the dwarves are like the best fucking diggers in the world, right? They know exactly where they are competent. They make an entire Not fucking these. underground society, <laughs> and these. all of a sudden. They don't even know how to dig a few fucking inches, a few fucking feet to, towards sunlight. They can't, I don't know, exit the fucking mountain and see where. No. What? what or or at least in, in dire situations have some farms on top instead of under. No, can't have that. But what makes me so upset is there the way no it's depicted. There are no slaves to the sun, remember. That, right. There's no <laughs> slaves to the sun. Except for they're the, definitely slaves the, to the sun. The way it's depicted is he's like, dig here, dig here. And this is just some random fucking shaft down here. There's a main foundation. Right? And down here. Yeah. And then when they're like, light has returned to the kingdom. I am smart and intelligent. And it pans out. And you see in the great hall or the great open area, light has shown again. What's like, but that's, those are the areas that you de dug. <laughs> You would have had to have done Aziz that, I mean, pulled the mirrors. That's exactly where you needed to dig in the first place. Why is it so stupid? I don't understand. Okay, so it it's much. the mir mirrors is what you're saying. Yeah. So then the mirrors bounce the light from the thing, and then they bounce up to the roof, and then the roof bounces. There's a back disco ball down. top that okay. when they shine all the mirrors on it, just it's like real it's cool. It's pretty crazy. Regardless, weekends. even if I give you that and I go back and look, and there's mirrors everywhere, I still think it's stupid and not depicted, um, you know, intelligently, yeah. and it sucks. But I do like that, you know, the dwarves are like, wow, these rings are giving us power and I'm making all the right decisions. And so I'm right. And it's corrupting them. And he's like, D give me more gold. <laughs> Dig here. He doubles the tariffs on everything. And so that, again, the because the fee. time is condensed, we don't ever get to be like, hey, the dwarves have that cool little quirk about them that the rings kind of don't really work on them the way that Sauron wants. And Sauron's like, God damn it. And, you know, but then later on he realizes, oh, there's a side, there's a, another effect. They get greedier and they fuck themselves. So I win. Mm -hmm. And we don't really get that. It's more like, yes, yeah, this is my plan the whole time. Yeah. So, you you know, every, all the rings are talking to each other. They're talking to him. And that, that's what they imply here, that the rings talk to yes. the high king of the elves and say, no, don't, don't do cool things. Stay where you're at and don't fight. <clears throat> no. That's not how it works. Anyways, uh, the, uh, let's see. For the, so they find in the uh, Disa. So when he gives a big speech and when we see that the light has returned, uh, Disa suddenly looks at a friend. Like, and her look is like, it's all like all wary. I don't even know how to describe her look. It's like there for half a second. And I'm like, what? What reason does she have? In the last episode, she's the one that's like, yeah, let's do this, you know, the thing. And then and then once he gives the speech that everything's okay now, now she's like... She knows the rings are evil. She knows the rings are evil. Because that's what the script said. But it's it's such a turn in off screen that... That's a lot of this stuff is quick turns. and Yeah. Well, her friend also didn't have any facial hair, and I didn't like that. Just yeah, saying. I didn't even look at her friend. <laughs> she was on the screen for like three seconds. Uh, she was very <laughs> detail-oriented. Um... Anyways, the doors of Durin. Then they show the doors of uh, Durin revealed. They made him the in the wrong place on purpose so they could watch the elves carry a heavy door for three fucking days like they did in <laughs> well, season one. you remember one. how they made a big deal about yeah. it, about the slab? Yeah. And then it's There's like, like what, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and then, uh, so then we get the whole scene of the manipulation of uh, Celebrimbor. 
Celebrant board, go ahead. What do you what do you think of all of this? Too uh, quick. He desires Usual. the rings of men. Yeah, yeah. He wants to make the rings of men. I think this is a terrible. I mean, they're, they've changed this for no reason. And I mean, Celebrant board is How like they changed it because the rings were never designed. Like the, all of the rings were for elves, all of them. Um, and then eventually he realized he doesn't have the sway over the elves that he wants with them, and so then he gives them to someone else he will have sway over, and then kind of sets everything up. And so like they did. The trying to convince, you know, Caleb Brimboard to make the rings for men is like, yeah, he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. They're going to, men die in, you know, a, a weekend to, yeah, the, to the all suck. Yeah, it's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And so he lifts. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I like this idea. Yeah. And so he starts lifting. He's like, oh, what about Baron? What about all of these really great men? And it's like, okay, well, you name four. List. There's like a, there's a couple million of them. You could only come up with like two two people that aren't dicks so like maybe maybe this is a bad idea and finally says nope can't I'm do sorry it. my friend i don't want to give the rings to men then i was doing uh, it myself <laughs> so i was like all right fine i'll do it myself and that was the one little thing there's like two explanations here in this that kind of speaks to the lore they but they're, they're so small and insignificant compared to all of the rest of the stuff that's being fucked up here all of the bad writing this is one of it because it's like the explanation of how the rings are just worse and worse or uh, more corruption mm -hmm. and more corruption as they go along because uh Celebrimbor is having letter littler and littler to do with their creation but then they fuck that up and they about face and Celebrimbor is like no now I will take personal control, and we will make all the rings for men, yeah. and we'll make these rings so goddamn good that nobody can ever be mad at us for the faults in the dwarven rings, or something. Yeah. What is that? Why is yeah. he? He's like, man, the dwarven rings sucked. They had problems because there was a guy. They were created with under a lie. You sent that that lying the, message yeah. out, and you, even though the the message got there faster than than Elrond did, and. So to see all of the, <laughs> the, the gaslighting and to see all the actual machinations that Sauron and Antar is doing kind of removes the veil and you see the wizard behind the, the curtain and it's just not. Yeah, I wanted it to be more clever and instead yeah. it comes down, it's like, no, it wasn't me. It's like, what, that's it, Shaggy? That, that's, that's <laughs> what we're doing here? That, that's your gaslighting? You, no, it wasn't me. It's like, come on, can we do something a little bit more clever for the Lord of the fucking Rings? <laughs> Nope. Yeah, uh, and then um, so fair. So now we go to you know, well, I'll do it myself, and he's like, Ooh. <laughs> and then we go to uh, from now on. I'm just calling them the fake Numenorians because these are not the Numenor. This is not the Numenorians. Yeah. And so far as on here is waxing poetic about obtaining power, and I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> he's <laughs> mad. He won't live forever, and I yeah. You know. Yeah, and. It, that's it is setting. It's important to set up because they have to <laughs> give him reasons to attack heaven and be mad at elves for having immortality. But there is a cool reason, and it's like the problem is like they're sh they're cheapening stuff that's coming later, and the yeah. audience doesn't know, I guess, because no like, people didn't read it. But it's like setting this dude up as like the ultimate evil on his own with no intervention by you know the devil that lives on earth it or, doesn't feel natural it, it doesn't it's like there, you can't have him be that he's not a, he's a dick he's not a good guy but like there's a difference between like being a dick and being a dude who's like literally going to go fight god yeah. and like there needs to be a push by Sauron, and instead they're just going like, nah, he wants to do it on, the, on his own yeah and so Farazan here tasks his his brat son to do something for him and he baits him with hey your mother said something about you when you were born and he's like what did he say what is she saying and he gets all like nervous and he's like what is she saying he's like well, i'm not gonna tell you until you do what i say and i guess everything that he does in the the rest of the episode is is the thing that farazan wanted to do like he's be a dick to everybody yeah. and then i guess at the end he's gonna say your mother said you were a dick and she hated you <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna. And you kill dumb. Yeah. And you killed a man, so she was right. Yeah. <laughs> <You're Yeah>. right. <laughs> <laughs> so Ellen Dill has a my queen, my queen scene, and he's like, look, not not only is he loyal to you know the good ways and these ways and the faithful, but he's falling more into the faithful and actually getting ties, maybe you know involved with her, mm -hmm. and he's like, hey. You still have people loyal to you. Let's do this and that. And what is she says? No, no. Cool. Just give up. It's fine. 
<laughs> That's a lot of this. Um, and then and everyone it, is being stripped of the rank. If yeah, they Arian the is his made-up character, the made-up daughter. Uh, Arian, she's, I have the power! Who gave you the authority? I have the authority to strip everyone's rank, including commanders and captains. And Okay, but cool. But you're a woman. Yeah, she's a <laughs> woman. Uh, if anyone loyal to the queen, we're stripping the power. And... Um, and he goes, you're not the captain anymore. Mm. And he goes, you're right. I am not the captain anymore. And uh, I see the Numenorian armor in the background, and I'm still pissed about it. It's it looks like shit. It looks terrible. And it's a new Numenorian design. I'm like, oh, God, thank God they redesigned their, their breastplates and their nipples, and, and, it, and it looks just shitty. All these armor designs from the Numenorians that are supposed to be sweet are worse. It's it's like you know when the artist creates like ten different armors and you get like three of them right and then you go it's like they chose like all the bad ones and then they said which one of these is worse and then they they choose that and it's just small things like that that make make me mad <laughs> whoever's in charge of that uh, and then <clears throat> she goes I could take your name off the list because you've been my longest friend and he's like you made it clear who your friends are and then and then we get. A guilty looks and melodramatic faces from uh, the girl and Kevin. Oh and I'm no! Like, well, why, why would you feel bad? You're like because he loves her and he's worried that she likes Pebble. That's what it is. It is, and I guess guess what's going to happen when she finds out that Pebble or that Kevin killed Pebble. Uh, Pebble. Yeah. Anyways, so then we get this tribute, uh, r ring tribute. What I wrote that, ring tribute. Oh, they bring all the the seven, the, the six dwarven lords oh, from yeah, the other yeah. kingdoms oh, to yeah, get yeah. invited to to Casa Doom. Yeah, and uh, he. I thought these were going to be the actual leaders and kings of the other dwarven mounts. They're not. They're they're just messengers or something. And bring he's, them like, to your masters. To Stop it. That's, that's not yours. This is mine. And there is a price. If you want all the power that we have, there's going to be a price. <clears throat> Half. The, yeah. And then Disa has slapstick, uh, you know, comedy as she chases the rolling rock down into the depths and runs into the Balrog. And the Balrog screams at her. And she goes, ah! And then she leaves. And she goes, there's a Balrog, everybody down here. And then they go down there and they see the Balrog. And then they fight it and they kill it. And everything's okay. That was a good scene. That was a good scene. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, she goes down there. Oh, my God, there's something it's here. It's evil. And then when she walks back up, she goes, ah. And then quietly walks through the rest of the market. I like how she knows that it's, it's a nameless thing. For, it's like you're saying it like you're reading it off the script, not like I would assume that just an average, you know, <laughs> dwarf princess would know. But all right. Uh, <clears throat> we get a scene here where uh, the, you know, the best actors are interacting and they said, look, I see everything. You know, he's like, you mustn't dig, Father. He's like, there is no danger. I can see every shaft, every treasure, every vein, every gold. Don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> Shafts and veins? What? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So there's a, a seemingly a floating hammer, um, but apparently it was an elf wearing a human ring because uh, when you put on, uh, I guess this is a prototype for the one ring. Uh, no, it's a human ring because when you put on the human rings and you turn on, you, you uh, get corrupted and you're a ring wraith. So she goes into another world and she says, I saw flaming things. I saw Sauron. I saw Sauron. And he's like, well, maybe it was a brim I thought it was, board, uh, I mean. yeah. I thought it was a fireplace, but it wasn't. It's like it's Calabrimbor. Yeah. He's been, act he's been acting a little weird, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, trust oh me. Oh, my you God. Look... Your eyes. <laughs> you're so pretty. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, piercing>. <laughs> So obvious. These elves are so dumb. The new character, Mer, Mirdania, Mirdan, Mirdania, who, by the way, that's not an elvish name at all. They could have, they could have made that name more elvish. There's like a certain cadence that you do with the elvish language and the elvish names. They just like been, made yeah. up their own name and Her they name fucked it up. Her name is Bertha. <laughs> it could have been Mirandanel, uh, Mirandeth. Uh, Mir These are people speculating on. Hey man, it's like so. I think it's an Easter egg <clears throat> to the Gwaith I Mirandane, the name of a Celebrimbor's little smithing nerd club in uh, Eregion. But I don't know. They just did it poorly because they could have done that 
and gave her that name, but had it make sense and, and uh, been an actual elf name. Um, but anyways, they're forging rings of men with Sauron using a new method. And uh, I don't know why it makes her disappear. They used a different method. Oh, they, they poured more more, yeah. m uh, um, more what? Mithril yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, and he's like, no, you should have. And he's like, yes, tell, tell us what you what you do here. Save us the toil and trouble. And he's like, ah, fuck, I see what you're doing. Like, you're going to manipulate me into doing the, the rings. But then, just then, Durin shows up uh, to Celebrimbor and brings news of the greed and the mood changes almost immediately when you're wearing the rings. There is something wrong with the rings. And Durin then casts suspicion. He says, okay. If you did everything right, then it had to be the creators of the rings. It was either you, no, Anatar. That motherfucker, I don't trust. He comes out of nowhere. Your rings are broken. They're fucked up. They're fucking my dad up. As he's dressed in all gold and everything, his dad gives him everything. All the rings. <laughs> Blinged out. Yeah, something's wrong with my dad. It's like, oh, that's a nice little thing you got there. <laughs> and so, so Sauron sees this and he's like, ah, oh, fuck. And so then he influences Merendania uh, uh, to say that, you know, it was Celebrimbor that might have been the dark the vision, influence. Yeah. And my God, you're pretty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, then we go to the, the Selim c ceremony with Elendil. I don't know. It's like the oldest shrine and they're doing a ceremony mm -hmm. and fucking Kemen shows up and he's like, shut it down. Shut it all down. Uh, we're going to condemn this place and we're going to knock it all down. But he's like, this is the oldest shrine in this all thing? of Numenor. <laughs> <laughs> this thing classic trope of an evil gang yeah uh, if only there was a dog for him to have kicked because yes. that was the only other thing they could have done to make him be that more is ridiculous. timeless they needed a new aqueduct <laughs> and it's like okay i get it that this like all right the queen was doing some bullshit and i don't trust her no more i'm an average citizen of the numenorians it's like okay yeah that's but now you're you're tearing down all of our most holy places and say what what? Because of the gods of the elves and they're they're trying to set up this thing where oh, all of, where all of the you're Numenorians right. are trying to rebel against religion the, the Valar oh, and yeah. rebel against anything that's yeah. elvish at all except for it, this is I mean it's rushed yeah again. they're just trying to do it because they need to find a way to get Ellen Deal separated because he's for whatever reason everyone knows and loves him right now even though they're not not supposed to and. And they're just trying to get him in prison so they can have all loyalists. So Valendil is like, fuck this. I'm done with this guy. And he starts kicking his ass. And the, I, I love this scene because the guy, you he's clearly tell he's not a warrior. He's struggling. Hold him. I don't I know him. how he actually holds uh, him you know, underwater. Valendil's head underwater. Yeah. That's a, I was like, like, they that's make this a hold. huge thing. And I'm like, is he about to drown him? I was going to get really mad. But then he effortlessly pushes him off when the time has expired yeah. when the directors are like, all right, now it's your Dislocated turn. Dislocated his shoulder. And he's like, hey, don't do this. His father tells him, don't, or not. That's not his father. It's, uh, you know, his, his captain, captain says, don't do that. And he's like, you're right. And here's, here's I won't the, do it. Here's the sword. I'm going to turn my back to you. You better not do anything naughty. <laughs> Nothing. And then he turns his back you to him. You oh, <laughs> oh, and then Curse your inevitable <laughs> but telegraph betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> So Elendil has <laughs> now put on the path of 100% certainty. We are going to civil war. I am not going to be on your faction anymore. I'm going to find Numenorians that will put a stop to this because this is not the direction that I want. This is not the way. This is not the way. You do not know the way. And uh, yeah. And then, you know, uh, Celebrimbor asks if motherfucker altered the rings. He's like, did you? Alter the rings in some way, Anatar. Did you add a little evil to him? Because I don't know. No. And he's like, oh, thank God. And he believes him instantly. But then he immediately goes, we did. And I was yeah. like, no, it wasn't me. Have you been working out? Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> he, he <looked> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's him tempting <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, in this instance, it's somewhat clever. He's like, wait, you lied in that letter, so you brought deceit into this. That's probably what it is. Yeah, He's yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck, you're right. I did. <laughs> uh, all right. One well, me. <laughs> 
Uh, Kyler Brandt is yeah. fucking stupid. Um, and then the uh, father gives his son Prince Duran title again, mm-hmm. and uh, Disa or Dira, whatever, Don't swears wear that she'll ring. never wear those rings. So he swears it. Um, and then that's when Celebrimbor is like, no, we must atone for our mistake with the Dwarven Rings by making the Rings of Men and completing the Rings of Power. What? Yep. What? He had to say Rings of Power. They hadn't said it in the show in a long time. They had to remind <laughs> you what you're fucking watching. We're going to make these so awesome. They're going to draw the strength from the three. They'll redeem the seven because he thinks the dwarven rings are, need to be redeemed and they're fucked up. Yeah. And they'll redeem us all. Shall we begin, says uh, Sauron. And then the orcs approach a Region. And uh, Elrond's, that's when Elrond's like finally reaches the kingdom and he's like, hey, hi, king. I, the, the Galadriel gave us time to escape. And I we ran found as this, fast as I could. <laughs> he found, we found this big ass orc army, and it's about to attack. Um, you know, Region. Let's let's go fight them. And and the king is like, Nah, I'm all right. But it's like, wait a minute. Weren't you the one that's like, We got to find the darkness, and we got to defeat them really quickly. So let's go where they're at and beat them up. Okay, we found them. Let's beat them up. No, he's been corrupted already. Alex, I'm looking for to you for explanations. He's been there are none. Apparently. I don't there know. There fucking That's are the only none for this. That's it's, the only one. The ring is whispering into his yeah. ear, but I thought that the rings weren't corrupted by Sauron. And well, th- th- those good. are the, the story rings that were made without Sauron's involvement. These are made-up rings that, that we... That are with m- Sauron's yeah. involvement. And then the second you put them on, even though the one ring... Uh, so remember, like the rings don't get like super fucking corrupted until he forges the one ring, and then all of the elves sense him, and they pull him off immediately and go, oh, shit, these are bad. Yeah. And so it's like, unless he created the one ring, and that's what, we're going to get a flashback at the end that three weeks ago... <laughs> all right, I'll give you all the motherfucking explanation <laughs> since y'all couldn't do it so go ahead tell me about the uh the fucking orcs that are about to attack a region sir there's orcs right outside a building we should attack no that's too expensive <laughs> oh okay yeah. the budget does not allow for that <laughs> that's a lot of money to depict that and plus we we don't really have a, a lot of uh uh you know elven armor sets we we sold those in an auction you know in lord of the rings peter jackson's all those are gone so we'd have to make some more and yeah it's too expensive <laughs> Well, they could do. They wouldn't like, even use them. They'd want to make their own at, to like distance themselves from a, be- a better yeah, work, yeah, and they would make right. them ugly. Yeah. They'd be the buck fucking They're elf book be armor. They from, have uh, to show oh, elven Christ. armor in the next three episodes. We, we've, seen, we've seen some. We saw All one right. dude on a horse. So, uh, and at the very, very end, uh, Adar brought Galadriel as a potential ally. That lieutenant is all like, I'm a killer and I'm a break her out and I'm a slit her throat. But Adar Who's saves cut her. her. Hair? And he's like, we share a common enemy. She has a shank. Yeah. She's and been apparently the reason why, because I thought it was so fucking stupid that they humanized the orcs, destroying the lore in the process, that all they want to do is live they don't want to fight anymore. They want peace and they want to live with their little orc babies and their <laughs> orc wives. And they're not, stupid. They're not creatures you. of evil. Right. Just hearing you it's so say stupid. That, it's like, they're no. creatures of evil. <laughs> but the movies, like, no. I don't want to feel bad for I them. Don't wanna, I don't want to fight anymore, sir. <laughs> they're evil. The reason why they're doing that is, I'm, I'm telling you, this is why these showrunners, they're rookies, and they're not up for the job, and these writers are below average. It's a writer's reason. It's a fucking writing trope. So they're using that because they need this lieutenant later on in the series to make a pivotal decision that's out of character and leads to something big. So that so they put in a foreshadowing, but they didn't realize that the seed that they're planting is literally a rancid fucking seed that that destroys the lore Doom and, and makes everybody question everything <laughs> yes. about all of the orcs. Yes. And are we murderers? Are, are we, we the baddies? Are we the baddies? <laughs> and they're so stupid because they wanted to get to some fucking event later on. Maybe this orc is like, oh, he's helping Galadriel, so I'm going to kill Adar, and now Adar, who they wants to ha- ally with the elves, <laughs> and kill Sauron. I, I don't know. 
Apparently, this character is important later. That's why they set it up. That's the excuse that they said because they saw the feedback and they did were like, they oh, say that? shit, yes. I, did, I don't watch the end they episode said. stuff. It, oh. This wasn't in an episode. Oh. This was in an interview oh. where people were like, what the fuck did you just do? And he, they kind of completely brushed aside the implications of what they did. And <laughs> the they said, well, the reason why that character was set up is because we need to set his motivations up for a pivotal decision that that character makes in the future. With I'm like, yeah, but did you not did you not consider the lore implications for anything? You so he kills Adar? I, no, we don't know what happens. No. I don't even know if he kills Adar. No, I'm saying, do you think he just killed Adar? I, I have no idea what he's going to do. He's either going to let Galadriel go and do something good, or and that's why they're humanizing him. Or he really or is, he is going to kill that. I think he. Can, if if you're saying that he serves a big purpose later because of the interview, then if he realizes that Adar does not have his family in mind, and that he is just as bad of a leader as Sauron, I can definitely see him being the one that that acts as Adar because we can't have Adar going around for a couple more. Seasons. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense even in their version because it's like, okay, I'm going to kill this guy who's been lying to us. Now I am the big boss. And I'm going to stop fighting. We can all go back to our babies and our women. Because that's what I wanted. Are you telling me he's going to kill Adar and be like, No, now I'm in charge. Get out of here, woman. Shut the fuck up. Take that baby. Throw it across the fucking... Now we're going to fight everybody. What? Yes. <laughs> our Sauron's going to bless me and he's going to give me power and I don't care. So I will fight for Sauron now <laughs> instead of Adar. I don't know. What, I don't know. But it's about to get fucking stupid. I'm, I'm about. So, I'm so about. I, well, about. I think it is. It's about to get stupid. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest joke. I, yeah, because I think next episode is where we spend almost all of our time in Rune, and we kind of resolve the who's because we have to, right? The last two episodes have to be the siege and focus on the siege. So this next episode has to be Rune, Rune, oh, the sure. dumbest shit. It, it's like anytime we sit, stay away from Galadriel and the the Harfoots, what do we do? The very next episode, we focus on them on the following they gotta one. Go right. back. All right, so. Um, anyways, uh, he tries to. He's like, hey, we have a common interest. Let's. Let's ally against Sauron. Anyways, the rings are being forged at the very, very end. Very, very, very end. Yeah. Oh, the other little nugget that I was like, oh, the cool the rings explanation <laughs> of uh, the men rings being it's even more there. corrupted than the other rings was kind of cool. One cool thing that the show could do is kind of give us, explore the unnamed ring wraiths because we don't ever really know specifically you know, where those rings go, who who are the men that get those rings. Maybe we can learn more about the, you so know, the Nazgul here. Too. They'll, I, they'll find a way to but, fuck but that But you're up. right. They would find a way to fuck <laughs> I up. want that, but I don't want it from these people. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know. Uh, One of them's name's Bill, and Bill's <laughs> just, Bill, Bill hated, hated killing orcs because they had families, and so... <laughs> So he Sarah, needed power he needed, to not f attack the orcs. But he didn't like paying taxes, and so... Earth, so, so win! Hot. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fire! That's it's like only five rings? I don't know. I forget the other Yeah, the other four don't count. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah, so... <sighs> there is a, I mean, there are ring of fire. At least the, the Numenor storyline is finally getting going with this brewing civil war and a villain to properly hate. Right, uh, because before it was even more unfocused. So hopefully that that will you know bear some fruits. You just hate, just to hate. I, I forgot know. to mention, Farazan <laughs> touches the. He doesn't touch it there, and he doesn't do it. But I think he does it the off temptation. screen. Yeah. The temptation of the uh, pa palantir. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, I did like. So there was. I was like, okay, where is one good scene here? I found one. Let's see. What's the best scene, do you think? Yeah, everything with the mines. Okay. Does it? Go in specific. You're on the right track, specifically with those actors. Who's the best Who's the best two actors there? And what scene did he have that I like? Well, both Dur. I mean, both Durins. Yeah. Um, the yeah. digging part? No. You, no. No, I don't like It's close. Part. It's it, it's a meeting. Well, no, what he's having. talking about is like, oh, well, who said this? It's like, well, oh, you, this it's was really off short. limits and he, all this. He gives them princehood back when he's like, you're, I'm, I'm proud of you. and you can That was a good like, one, too. But the one I'm referring to is when he's acting like Bilbo, when he misplaced the ring. I liked that that that, yeah, that, that thing. Was, oh. yeah, where he was like, he's talking about where's doing the all the mining. Did you fucking take my ring? It's like, sir, you, you said it was heavy. You said it on. You said it down. You said it was heavy on you. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I did. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I like mean, that. But fucking one weekend, one weekend, like it's very yes, powerful. it's condensed. It, it is super condensed. I don't like that. But um, I just wanted to say the dwarven storylines are kind of the best acted. They're trying to do with what they're being yes. told, and they're trying to make that work. But they obviously are having a problem, and. Uh, the rebellious made-up daughter is still shit. I want to say that from uh, Numenor. Anyways, Anything so. Anything away from the, that, yeah. Um, we, we got more shit incoming. I saw a, a tiny little preview. It does look like we, we see some kind of monster in the water at Numenor where the queen falls into some water. At first I thought, oh, maybe that's the watcher in the water. But later on in another scene, you see its head. And it almost looks like the creature that Sauron controlled. Uh, they already 3D modeled it. Why would they not use it again? Because, yeah, they're running out of money. And Sauron is happy during the siege. We see him walking. Uh, the queen says she needs Elendil. We already know that. Galadriel is pissed. Adar is attacking her again. She's like, no, down! While well, they're holding her back, and probably that's when they're throwing the siege. I don't rem ever remember any sort of shipping between uh, Muriel and Elendil. Like, I think this is all made up, yeah, too. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I think, think that's all made up as well. Yeah. I mean, Ferris isn't supposed to force her to marry him, but I don't think the show is going to go in that direction. No. Because he doesn't get legitimacy from a fucking bird showing up. He, right. gets, he forces his it's cousin to like marry. It's like she's already an outcast and she has zero power. Yeah. But in, in the Lord, she still has a little bit. Well, right? he forces her, her, his cousin, to marry her and yeah. like locks her away. And he's like, nope, I'm the king by, by right because I married her. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I already brought up... Uh, Anary on his other son, yeah. which will probably be in, in the another other side. season. He finally he's finally came over. He's on the other side of the island. <laughs> it's I a really, really, it. really big island. You, you, it's you, such a you small don't know. fucking yeah. area. It's bigger than Middle Earth. Yeah. Right? And, and, no, it's not. And then, you know, it the seems little like candles. it is. He's still on the other side. You're right. It does seem like it. <laughs> How many times did come back and like, what the fuck happened to Nuno? How many times do the dwarves go to Oregion from Casa Doom in this episode alone? There's like, there's back and forth. Like, there's no, it's like, oh, it's next door it's like well not really but he goes uh, over there tells him about his lunch and goes back home yeah <laughs> uh anyways when they're launching the candles in the water at numenor you can see in the background that there's like cities and it's like all cgi and i'm like oh that's kind of how how big it would be but like if you're not paying attention then everything is just like these small sets uh i'm glad they're all gonna die yeah, and they deserve they deserve <laughs> to die. It should have been like these badasses, <laughs> these paragons of men. They're so cool, and they kick ass, and then their hubris now they from one faction. Ass? It's a it's a fucking warning story, and and it it, it actually has morals and and lessons that we could learn from today that you can be an amazing fucking country and then you let the wrong people take charge and you go in the wrong direction and your pure fucking hubris you will get you destroyed no you have to do and, stand in front of an eagle but yeah these people aren't even nope, that cool <laughs> they're just dumb as fuck <laughs> yes. and you want them to trip on their face and slam and lose all of their teeth because they're dumb as fuck yes. yeah and then they're not even being corrupted and that's that's the other thing. It's like I, I want to see this this amazing community that does amazing things. One bad leader plus the corruption of you know Satan's little helper, and then it turns them into some, to, to nothing. No. And then, but they're just gonna they're evil and <clears throat> dumb on their own. Yeah. And I don't want to see that. So at some point, Joe uh, you, uh, Sauron has to leave Eregion, or maybe get captured from Eregion, and then get uh, by the Numenorians. They find him. He in has Lord, to yeah. go. Into they find him in Mordor. Yeah, they march a big fucking army well, to Mordor. Ass. Yeah, so they find a big army to Mordor. His orcs abandon him. They're like, "Holy fuck! You see how many assholes yeah. are there? And they're all ten feet tall." Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. And then they leave. And then so Sauron goes, "Oh, you've got me. Put me in chains." And then they drag him there. And then eventually he gets him to worship Morgoth. And then they get him to be like, "Hey, doesn't it suck? You have to die. What if you fought God? You wouldn't have to die." And then he's you know. <laughs> so three more episodes. No, that that's in season three and four and five. Hey. 
Which a it. lot of people hey, are think even it? thinking that Rings of Power might get canceled. Yes, I start that's to what I'm saying. Bunch, no, that's like, you know, it's not gonna farming go for four, views and five. stuff. I'm not farming. That's a that negative thing because, you know, it's well, a possibility. It, it's it interesting is. to I talk about. I don't think for four and five. But like I think that's a little too early. I, I personally already think that, you know, this is Jeff Bezos' baby. And no matter what, they're seeing it through. That's what I think. Wow. Even though the fucking views are down yeah. and this and that. Well, no, they just recently, like, they're saying, all oh, the views are down, the views are down, and then Amazon just released this thing, a number one show in the world, 40, 40 this and that, and they're trying to, you know, uh, say that that's not true and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see it play out. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm curious. I, I don't, I would be so curious to see season three's numbers after this. Because if people like IGN, who were on board with season one, like an 8 out of 10 or whatever they gave it. And then this one, they've seen all the episodes, and even they gave it a 6 out of 10. Oof. That that just means that even Doesn't the people well. who are on board are like, nah, man, this ain't it. No. We'll see. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you guys <laughs> uh, for going on this journey with us. And I, I just, I think what, uh, at least there in the end, when I did some raging towards the end of this review, we're just, I don't know, it's like... <laughs> It's just, it's just sad. Yeah. It's not a serious thing for me. No, it's like it, I don't. It's yeah. not anymore. It's, it's not just anymore. Like, right? It's, it's like it's just, I'm watching. It's like how we're expecting to be yeah, disappointed. It's just like, what dumb things can they do now? Oh, oh, that, <laughs> that was pretty dumb. <laughs> it's so good. I, I am having fun though. I just uh, because. It's it is very ridiculous. It's like um, <laughs> it's watching little kids play with toys when you know, when they're they don't think they're being watched. <laughs> and they're playing with your toys. Yeah, it's just like the guy, it's so fucking stupid. Like he deserved to be stabbed. He's like beating him up. The guy's literally he broke going his arm to drown him. <laughs> yeah, he was going to drown him. He breaks his arm. He's like, all right, here's the gun. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you were drowning <laughs> the man. You were being drowned. Yes. You don't yeah. think he's going to try to kill you again. <laughs> I was like, yep, that was fucking dumb. <laughs> But at least that character had some kind of purpose because I was like, what purpose does this particular character serve? <laughs> and when like he got fucking said. stabbed, I was like, oh, okay. It's just simply a plot device yeah, to piss off yeah. the captain who's going to be like, oh, well. But now, now, he's, now he's truly alone because his truly. daughter has abandoned him, his son, his wife. We don't talk about that other son because he's not cast yet. He's on the and, other side. Yeah, and he's, and he's over there and he's like, he's <laughs> ca awkwardly caressing the face of the dead guy. Yeah, he's probably hanging out with... Um, uh, Galadriel's uh, teleporto. Uh, tele <laughs> it's not teleporto. I, I, Wait, it's teleporto. It is tele His name Hold is on. literally teleporto. Um, the comments said he's it right. It makes me laugh. <laughs> Google so teleporto. I don't. I promise. It's his alternate name or something. It's his original no, name. Cele uh, Celeborn. Celeborn is what it is. But they, they, have, they have two names. His, his name is literally teleporto. God damn it! Like... <laughs> Look, I tell you what not to Google. I know. And I tell you I what know. to. It is, it's, it is teleporno. I know it's teleporno. <laughs> I thought you were doing a play on words and it was like teleborn. No, it's literally teleporno. <laughs> yeah, it's teleporno. <laughs> his original Teleran name. Is yeah, it's his, his original name is teleporno. Is that from Telemundo? Sendar yeah, Telemundo. <laughs> that, that's teleporno. the, uh, you have to pay, pay for the show. Teleporno. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, porn. Yeah, <laughs> that's like they have their own little app. It's Paramount Plus, yeah. but it's like porn for Hispanics. <laughs> Telemundo, teleporno. Oh, you Maria? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, por qué? Oh my God. Uh, Are going off the rails now? <laughs> yeah, but teleporno is hanging out with motherfucking um, er, celebrian. No, uh, an Arion. Oh, well, where's his daughter? She has, he has to be hanging out with oh, his daughter, yeah, too. And, and she's hanging out. And he's hanging out. With, yeah. They're just on the other side of the yard. They're on the other side of the yard. Yeah. They're, the the <laughs> They're just waiting. We, have, we read the script. We're, We're not playing coming on until like, next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Later on. Is it our turn to come in the story? No. Okay. <laughs> but I'm kind of pivotal during this point. No. But later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. <laughs>